what I, I wanted to, to show here is that, uh, you know, the S&P came off, I guess it came off, off over 50%. And, um, and I guess we're down in the, I guess we're down in the twenties now. Um, and, and so the longer a, a, a bull, a bear market goes on, the longer it usually takes to restore confidence. And especially when you have interest rates that are still going up and you've got a war going on and inflation hasn't been, really hasn't been broken yet. This is the type of the bottom that you're going to get. It takes time. And if you see, if you see the spiders, when they came down into um, really trying to start, make a first low, which would be back on in October of 2008, it hit about 83.58, And see, look at the volume that the that it came down on during during that period of time. Yeah, maybe you can use your pointer or so and show them. Yeah, just it, did. It, yep, yeah, right there, there and then yeah, and then and then the, then then it came down again to 74, 74, 34. and it got it got another a, a couple big days of volume, but then look at the the next move down into a low, which is sixty seven ten. Yes, you've got a lot of days of volume. And which were above average daily volume, but if you compare it to the other two moves down, the volume was not as big. So it's like the selling is getting less and I mean less and less, even though it's at a high level. And lots of times when you, you're coming into a bottom, you get almost this relentless selling, and it looked like this occurred. It's almost like a climactic move. On the upside, you got a reverse of that coming down into that 6710 area with just it relentless day after day after day. It's down, down, down. Uh, and then it looks like it just exhausts itself. And look how the whole picture changes, at least in the color. And you now got, you've got, uh, let's see, you know, one, two, three, four days in a row to the upside, one day down, another two days up in a row, two down. And so the whole the whole thing starts changing, but it that that's where I usually try to look. And this is not it's not spaced out in a, in a orderly fashion. But I usually look for a three moves down, and that seems to exhaust the the downside. So eighty three fifty eight, then seventy four, and then seventy six uh, was your last low. And see. You don't have to be in there all the time trying to find a bottom. What I would, what I would love to see happen is just what happened here. You had a move from 67.10 up into about the high 80s, where it went sideways for about three weeks, and then started off again, and then went sideways from 93.22 for about three or four weeks, and that's sort of your, what you, what you want to see, and 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 what you can actually wait for. Uh, before you, you, you start doing your buying, you can wait for the first move to see other stocks and, and, and leaders start to emerge and bases to be built. And it just takes some time. And so you don't have to be a rush. I mean, like today, you might be saying, oh, I thought I saw one comment. Oh, I, 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 you know, this FOMO is killing me. I, you know, the market's up and, and running and I'm missing this. Well, it, if, if when you have a decline like you've had so far this year, it's going to take time for bases to rebuild. And so, what if you miss the first move? You, it's the the ob object is not to buy the exact bottom. The object is to buy uh, buy stocks or buy indexes when your risk is the lowest. And the first day, if this is a first day off the bottom. Uh, your risk is still very, very high, but your risk will get lower if you have a nice move up and then it starts drifting off. And, and so again, you give up the first move, but you're much more assured that you're gonna be making money on that, on that mm -hmm. second move. So That's a great point, David. Uh, and in the meantime, it, it's, it's, it's interesting how, uh, as, you, as you noted, volume was heavy here, volume was so heavy, but lightening up. And then as, as we were forming these little mini bases on the SPY, there's hardly any heavy volume selling. Right, right. And so the selling, the, the selling is, is dried up. And then um, I think the other thing too, I, I'm, I'm just gonna go to the weekly and see. 
then you'll also see that that was from the, the high that this market made in September of 07 uh, to that low in March of 09. Um, that was that was a good, let's see, tw uh, yeah. So that was that was about I guess 16 months or so, 17 months. I'd have to count it, but that's a good length of period of time um, that you want to be looking for. And the other thing is, um, I, I guess you would have to go out on the monthly chart on your on your chart. Okay. Uh, but you'll see that it undercut that previous low in 2002, 2003. That's a great sign when you see that. And that's why, yeah. I, and when I set up my targets and where I think this go, I, I look for undercuts, I look for previous bases. And uh, that's how I've come up with uh, the different targets that I, uh, that, I, that I wrote down or that I tweeted out on the different indices. So if we can go to 2003. Okay, uh, be, be, before yeah. you go to 2003, just uh, a simple question regarding moving averages on the monthly or the daily. Uh, do you look at you know, how far the index has come below a key moving average like the 200 day, compare that with past bear markets? Uh, that... I, I, I guess you know, that's, that's one way. I mean, that, that's one indication of uh, a way to look at it. Um, but I, I much rather see, I see the, the, the price and volume characteristics starting to change where you get you know, nice moves up on bigger volume and then drifting down on, on lighter volume. That's the constructive type of thing that I like to see and not just, oh, I got to buy because now we're down, you know, we're down 18% below the 200 day moving average. Well, mm -hmm maybe it goes to 25% below the, so <laughs> it's just, I, I guess it's just one more indication of, hey, it, it's maybe getting overdone on the downside, um, but you really have to see the volume and price characteristics starting to change. Good point indeed. And now let's go to the same SPY, right, David? And we'll yeah, go SPY to, and, yeah. And, and go to um, yeah the 2000, I, 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 yeah, you can, I, I'm using 619 of 2003. Oh, so I can, okay. yeah, so I can see the, the initial move up. Um, and so everybody How's can that? see that. Um, let me look at yours. Yeah, I that's, got you. that's yeah, good. 619. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so here you got, again, you've got, and it's, isn't it fascinating? There you go. When the market came down into July of 2000, and um, I guess that's 2002, um, how look at that low yeah on on uh i guess that's 723 7768 then you start rallying and it, it looks like you get a, a, a decent i mean that's a pretty strong rally you come back down again and you undercut that 7768 by just a little bit and that's where you turn you turn on some very very big vol volume which is bigger and more consistent than the 7768 and you go up again, and then they come down to scare you again. And, and <laughs> lots of times this happens where they, where where the actual psychology gets the worst on this third move down. And this one actually didn't go through the lows, but it's just people have been beaten up for so long. It's like the last time they just can't take it, and people get so negative. But look at that move off that seventy nine thirty eight. You got one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row to the upside. And it was on good volume and it was on volume that was that was bigger than what had traded for the last like three or four months. That's what you wanna, that's, that's, a, that's a great sign, a great first initial move off. And then, and then you, you drifted down, you came off again, but then the whole thing, yeah, it just, you got a few bad days of volume, but you started building bases, breaking the 200 day moving average. And then you came out of that whole 95 area that was that that had been resistance 95, 97, 96 that had been resistance for the last uh, six, seven, eight months, and you broke out of there. And by that time, you probably have a lot of stocks that have uh, that have become become leaders, and and you probably get a few week pullback to, to get into those. So you, again, you don't have to be buying at the exact bottom unless you really wanna trade them. You can wait for these setups. You can wait for the bases to form. 
uh, because right now there really aren't many bases that that are that are out there informing. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.